Today we're going to study earnings per share. Earnings per share must be presented at least as basic earnings per share if there are no potentially dilutable shares. If there are potentially dilutive shares, even if they're not dilutive and therefore are not in the calculation, you must have a two-part presentation, basics earnings per share and diluted earnings per share. Diluted earnings per share will always be the same or less than basic. Why? Because if there are securities that could be issued, but if they were, they would make earnings per share go up, they are left off. Those are anti-dilutive securities. Here is the six-part presentation. If you have an extraordinary item, you must show it separate from the subtotal before and the final total after the extraordinary item. Discontinued operations is the most common kind of extraordinary item, and that's what's shown here for ADP for 2006. For basic earnings per share, the numerator is net income minus preferred dividends declared over the weighted average common shares. Now those preferred dividends must be declared if the dividends are non-cumulative. So if you have preferred dividends but nothing's been declared, there is nothing to remove from net income. If the dividends, if the preferred dividends are cumulative, however, even if nothing is declared, you assume that the maximum dividend is declared and remove it from the numerator. Remember that the maximum dividend is computed as the percent times the par, as I've done it here for you, 5% times the 100 par. So that particular dividend would be $5 per share maximum. If cumulative, you would then multiply that times the number of preferred shares and subtract it from net income. Now for the denominated weighted average common shares, you must wait however many months of the year each of the various levels of shares have been outstanding, if there's any changes during the year at all. And for stock splits and stock dividends, if there are any, you must adjust all the shares prior to the stock split or stock dividend to the new ratio, including prior years if you have a prior year presentation. Let's have a look and see what this looks like. So this particular firm had two changes during the year. They issued some additional shares at the end of September, and then they bought back some shares on the 1st of December. So for the first nine months of the year, there was 126,000 shares outstanding. So we would multiply that subtotal times 9 twelfths. Then it shifted for two months to 146. And then it went down a little bit for the final month to 144. So the weighted average common shares would be the 94.5 plus the 24.333 plus the 12,000. So that 130,833 would be the denominator you would use for basic earnings per share. Now, if you have a stock dividend, as is the case in this particular scenario, you would have to wait all the subtotals prior to that stock dividend. And then, of course, for each of the subtotals, however many months that subtotal was true, you wait it for that number of months. For So for diluted earnings per share, you would analyze each security separately. And if any of them make earnings per share go up, when you do them individually, you would leave that security off, ignore that security in the calculation. The three classic uh, dilutive securities are the convertible bonds, the options or warrants, and the convertible preferred. For the convertible bonds, you treat it as if they all converted on the first day of the year. So you, there would be no interest on those bonds, so you would add that interest back. That interest expense is eliminated, and the tax that it sheltered is eliminated. 
and then you add the, con the number of new shares that the bondholders would get into the denominator. Now for options or warrants, you, when they're exercised, the holder typically would give you cash. Uh, and so you, and you would give them new shares. So there would be no impact on earnings or net income. There's no expense related to that. So the numerator would be the same, but the denominator would have some new shares and you remove from the number of new shares that you give to the folks exercising their option and warrant, however many shares you could buy with the cash they gave you. And for convertible preferred, if there were dividends, if, if it was cumulative or if it was non-cumulative and some dividends were declared, you remove those dividends from the numerator or the effect of those dividends from the numerator and you add the new shares that they converted into in the denominator. So let's do one of each of these with some numbers to see how it works. All right, so here's a convertible bond. You've got some bonds payable, two million in bonds payable. Each bond has a $5,000 face 4% coupon rate, and they each bond converts to $10, 10 shares each. So how many bonds do you have here? Well, each individual bond is 5,000. They add up to 2 million. So you have to divide the 2 million by the 5,000 to figure out how many bonds you have. And then each bond could be 10 shares, would convert to 10 shares. Here's your net income and your weighted average common already done for you. And then there's the tax rate. Why do you need to know the tax rate? because when you do the diluted earnings per share, the interest on those bonds is going to be added back to net income, net of tax. So you do have to know the tax rate. All right, you can freeze this frame and try to work it, or you can watch me work it and let it advance. So the numerator, I would add back the 80,000. Where did I get the 80,000? That's 4% times the 5,000 times the number of bonds that I have. And I uh, want to get the after-tax rate, so I multiply that times 1 minus the 0.35, which is the uh, tax rate. Okay, that's the numerator. Then for the denominator, we've got the weighted average common, and I, and I have 400 bonds, which is the 2 million divided by the 5,000. And each of those bonds can be converted into uh, 10 shares. So I add the new 4,000 shares to the denominator. And so my new earnings per share is the 552 divided by the 404, $1.37. So now I have to decide if that's dilutive or anti-dilutive. Well, how do I know? Well, I go back to the basic earnings per share. What is the basic earnings per share? Well, that's the 500,000 divided by the 400,000, $1.25. So this is anti-dilutive because it made earnings per share go up. So you would leave it off. So in this case, your basic earnings per share would be $1.25, and your dilutive earnings per share, if this was the only security you had, would also be $1.25. Now I'm going to change the facts. You work this one now. Freeze the frame. When you are done and think you have a correct answer, forward it to the solution. Okay, so now you're going to add 80,000 shares to the denominator. And so now the earnings per share is $1.15, which is lower than the basic earnings per share, so now it's dilutive. So you would have a basic earnings per share of $1.25 and a dilutive earnings per share of $1.15. Let's try one for options or warrants. You have a, uh, There are options outstanding for 5,000 shares that they can buy at $10 per share. The average stock price for the year was $16. Here's your net income and weighted average common. What is the dilutive earnings per share, diluted earnings per share. You can freeze this and try to work it, or you can watch me work it. Okay, so the extra shares that are going to be issued are uh, one for each of the 5,000 shares, and we would subtract from that however many shares we could buy with the money we get. Well, how much money are we going to get? We're going to get 5,000 times the $10, 50,000 in cash. We divide that by the average stock price, and so we, we could go get 3,125,000 shares in the open market with the cash that the folks exercising these options would give the firm. 
And so the net new shares in the denominator would be 1875 So you add that to your weighted average common and you get a new earnings per share of $2.48. So the question is, is this dilutive or anti-dilutive? Well, now you have to know how to compute your basic earnings per share so that you can make the comparison, right? It's dilutive because the basic earnings per share is $2.50. So let me change one of the facts in this and let you work it on your own. All right, I changed the average stock price. So freeze this frame and you work it and then you can check your work. Okay, so now you could buy 6,250 shares with the cash that those uh, exercising their options would give you. And that would buy more shares than the shares you had to issue. So your denominator would have fewer shares. And so you know that the earnings per share calculation will go down if there's fewer shares in the denominator because there's no change to net income. So now let's look at some convertible preferred shares. Let's say that we have a 6% $100 par convertible prefer preferred stock, uh, and it's cumulative. You can convert it into 8, 000, uh, 8 shares apiece. Okay, so how many shares do you have? It doesn't tell you, but you know that in the par account, you can only put par, and anything above par must be put into the paid in capital in excess of par account, which is the 700000 So the only thing you can put in the 400000 uh, level account is the par. So you can take the 400000 and you can divide it by the $100 par, and you can find out that there are 4,000 shares issued. There's your net income and your weighted average common. And so you can freeze the frame and try this, or you can watch me work it out. So your basic earnings per share would remove the uh, convertible preferred stock dividends because they're cumulative. We don't even have to know if they're declared. And so that 6% times the 100 would be $6 per share. And you figured out, or I helped you to figure out that there are 4,000 shares. And so that would be 24,000 that you remove from the numerator. And then you, we already have the weighted average common. So the basic earnings per share is $1.19. And then for the diluted, nothing happens to the numerator except you stop removing the preferred dividends. And then in the denominator, each of those 4,000 shares would now have eight shares of common. So you would add that 32,000 to the denominator and you would get $1.16. And it is diluted because earnings per share went down. So now I'm going to change one of the assumptions. I'm going to change how many shares it converts into. Go ahead and freeze your frame and you work this one and then start it up and check your work. Okay, so this one is anti-dilutive because when you uh, stop taking the preferred dividends out and you add the new shares in the denominator, it gets bigger instead of smaller. So your basic earnings per share would be $1.19 and your diluted earnings per share would also be $1.19 because you'd leave out the, um, this particular security. All right, let's try a verbal question about earnings per share. Take a minute and read this. And when you are ready, start the screen back up again and see what the solution is. So reacquired shares are treasury shares, and they should be removed from the data. In other words, the, the number of shares outstanding should go down when they are acquired. And we saw that in one of the earlier screens where I was showing you the weighted average shares on December 1st. The, there were 2,000 shares of sh treasury bought, and then the earnings per share went down. So you do reduce the number of shares outstanding in your calculation on the day that they are required. Um, reacquired shares do not go back to the beginning of the period. Only stock splits and stock dividends go retroactive to the beginning of the period and actually to prior years if they're presented. 
uh, stock dividends and stock splits consummated after the close of the period do not affect, that's not true. They affect going all the way back to any years that are presented. Um, so they are retroactive. And the shares issued during the period uh, are a result of stock dividends are weighted accordingly to the proportion of the period for which, no, the stock dividends go all the way back uh, for the entire period. Try this one. Go ahead and freeze your frame and read it. Make your selection and then advance the frame. Did you notice the word not? Right? So we don't need any cash dividends and common shares. It's not part of the calculation basic or diluted earnings per share. Try this one. Go ahead and freeze your frame. Advance it when you're ready. That's right. It decreases the diluted, but there's no change to basic if you have convertible securities. All right, uh, this is a full featured one uh, where you're going to need to create all six parts. Go ahead and freeze your frame and uh, work it. And then when you are ready, you can advance and check your work. So in the numerator for basic, you have to remove the uh, 30000 of preferred dividends from the continuing operations and net loss per share. Notice that the preferred dividends increase the amount of the loss. And then for the diluted, you ignore the dividends and you convert the shares into additional common shares. So the denominator gets bigger. And when you make the formal presentation of this, I'll show you in the next slide, you would not typically use the brackets. You would use your words to indicate that those are a loss per share. See how I've done that? All right, work like a dog. It will pay off.